Alrighty, welcome everybody back to another episode of the Ball Knower Podcast. It's been a little while. The My uh, beautiful co-host Andrew Watkins has been quite busy, so we haven't had a chance to sit down and record. But it is what it is. You know, it's life and whatnot. Andrew, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. It's good to hear. All right, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is a little bit of a controversial question. So, so tread lightly. Oh, no. Did Michael Jordan ruin the sport of basketball? N- no. Okay. So you are not in the same mindset as former Chicago Bull Scottie Pippen, who claims that Michael Jordan ruined the sport of basketball. I came across wow. this. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I feel like Scotty is just jealous. Scotty just... is so jealous. Scotty is okay. Me or my dad just rewatched the last dance and I've watched bits and pieces of it with him and going back and listening to Scotty talk during that and seeing how Scotty got did dirty. Like he did get did dirty or get done dirty. I can't fucking talk like he, he was treated poorly. He didn't get paid. That was rather unfortunate, but he was very petty about it, which, you know, if you guys know my opinions on Alan Robinson, I can't stand that shit. Like just be a man and deal with it. Don't be a baby. And, um, Yeah, Pippin, in his fucking memoir, something reflecting on his life, said, and I quote, I may go as far to say Mike ruined basketball. In the 80s on the the playgrounds, you'd have everyone moving the ball around, passing to help the team. That stopped in the 90s. Kids wanted to be like Mike. Well, Mike didn't want to pass, didn't want to rebound or defend the best player. He wanted everything done for him. And that's why I always believed LeBron James was the greatest basketball player the game has ever seen. He does everything and embodies what the game is truly about. That is a direct quote from a top 25 NBA player of all time. I don't think Scotty knows basketball. I don't think Scotty knows ball either. I'm afraid Scotty Pippen is a certified non-ball knower. First of all, he, he says that he doesn't want to defend the number one option, which is never true. That was not a true a single time. Yeah. In never Scotty's true. defense, though, the only way I could see that being true is Mike wasn't guarding bigs. He, he was a fucking shooting guard. No one expects him to go guard Charles Barkley in the paint. But Scotty yeah. was doing that shit. And it's kind of like that's what you were paid to do. That was your job. If you're going to yeah. complain about doing your job, fuck you. Like they paid. Yeah. Four of their five starters were literally paid to play defense. Even though Scotty was good on offense, he was paid to be a defensive player. That was his role. Rodman, same thing. Rodman never complained. Rodman, you don't see Rodman bitching about Jordan. Rodman says that uh, Jordan, not only is Jordan the best of all time, but that LeBron would be an average ball player back in the nineties. Like, that's the right mentality to have, not, oh, I'm sad, I want attention, woe is me. There was another story that came from The Last Dance uh, that I completely forgot about that is one of the fucking most petty things in the world. So it was after Mike had retired the first time, and when Scotty was, like, leading the Bulls, and they drew up a play for a final shot in, like, a game six or seven in the playoffs for someone other than Scotty, they drew it up for like Steve Kerr or some shit. I don't remember exactly who it was. And Scotty refused to go back out on the floor for the final possession because he wasn't getting the final shot. Like you like, I don't, I, I cannot understand that. I, I get wanting to have the ball in your hands if you're the best player, but like if you, you got to trust your coach in that situation, you know? Yeah. That's bullshit. And even then, you, you could have just went out there and been like, I'm going to do this myself and just taken the ball and fucking shot it himself. But yeah, no. And then reap the the rewards of that. Yeah. The consequences either way, either you make the shot and you're good or you miss the shot and you're fucked and the coach was right. You know, at least then you're yeah. taking it into your own own hands like a man instead of being a bitch like Scottie Pippen. <laughs> Anyways, this episode is not entirely based around Scottie Pippen slander, even though it is quite warranted from recent discovery. Um, yeah. Let's talk about basketball. Do we want to start with the finals or do we want to start with that trade? Let's start with the trade because I feel like we're going to be on the finals for a long time. Okay. Okay. Right. So we've got the Rockets sending Christian Wood to Dallas for the 26th pick, Boban Marjanovic, Trey Burke, and Marquise Chris. Andrew, take it away. What does this do? 
How does this affect LeBron's legacy? <laughs> um, well, first of all, I feel bad for Boban. Yeah, free Bobby. Exactly. And now him and Luca are separated, which is not good for the league. Yeah. In my opinion. But um, yeah. Rockets. I mean. The Rockets are really just a nothing team mm -hmm. at this point. They have a bunch of young players, but they have a bunch of young players that are pretty good. But like at this point, they're still rebuilding. So that 26 yeah. pick is good enough. Like you're not going to get a very good player at 26. But I mean, you're rebuilding. You're supposed to be looking for draft picks and people with yeah. low to expiring contracts. Mm -hmm. And Dallas get, I don't know. Like that's like the least you could do. <laughs> Like Christian Wood is like the least you could get Luca. I really hope they plan to do literally anything else to help Luca as well. If this is their answer to their big situation, I'm gonna be very sad. Exactly. Like they could have gotten like Rudy Gobert as much as you would have hated that. They could have went and gotten him, maybe, or like uh Jared Allen, maybe, mm -hmm. or somebody like that. But you get Christian <laughs> Wood, who is basically Portingus, but not as injury prone. No. Yeah. <laughs> a fucking healthy Porzingis. What a weird comp for Christian Wood, but it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, um I don't know. You you're you're spot on about them just needing draft picks. Just take what you can fucking get. You know, take a flyer on whatever. There's talent out there somewhere. Like the yeah. the fucking MVP was taken during a Taco Bell commercial. You can find talent anywhere. If you if you got a good GM, whatever, you can find it. Um but this does does bring up a question that isn't isn't quite. Um, this is more of a hypothetical question, right? Because we're talking about Boban getting sent to the Rockets, now he needs to be freed. Realistically speaking, what is a GM going to do if Boban just says I'm playing for this other team? What are they going to do? Like, you can call Boban into your office and be like, "Hey, man, we we really want you to stay here. You can't leave." If Boban says no, what are you gonna do? He's fucking he seven foot him. three, right? He almost seven killed foot three? John Wick. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he almost killed John Wick. He can pick you up by the neck and bite your head off. Simply. Yeah. Yeah. Like all these big players, I don't understand why they all don't just team up together. Just say fuck GMs. We're gonna create the thirty first team. Bring back the Seattle SuperSonics, and it's just all the biggest players in the league who said fuck you to the GMs and refused to. Move. What's the word? Be confined by societal norms. <laughs> it's like some anti nineteen eighty four shit right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I want this to be a thing. I'm gonna start this revolution. I'm gonna contact Boban and get this started. <laughs> DM Boban. DM Bob Boban. Yo, you don't have to take this shit, man. You're better than this. this You're above this. You're right. Get him. Get Aiton. Get Rudy Gobert. They can take Vooch. Maybe he doesn't want to go, but they can take him. Yeah. Get fucking Grant Williams after the Celtics lose the finals, and he's sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to take a shot like that. I, I didn't mean, need to do I that. Mean, I mean, okay, David. <laughs> 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 I didn't need to take a shot like that. I'm sorry. Um, oh yeah, man. All right, let's let's try to let's try to get on an actual track now. So the finals. Wh what have we talked about on here? We've gotten to talk about one game, I think. It was Maybe. the first game of the finals. Yeah, because we've been fucking slacking. Well, you've been busy, and I've been slacking. I've been slacking. So three games of four games have happened. Steph Curry is that dude. Five games have happened. What? Five games have happened. Well, we talked about the first one, so four have happened since then. Well, you didn't specify, so I was confused. I figured it was implied. Well, I'm a little slow, okay? I need to get yeah, I can tell. Okay. I can okay. tell. Yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. We can't be fighting like this. Yeah. We need to get a we need to get a mediator on here, have couples counseling <laughs> next week. <laughs> I've been t I've been talking to a to a I'm just gonna say because everyone sees it I've been talking to Elite Takes T Nico on a, on a Twitter all the time or just get him on here and he can be the mediator for a couple's counseling because that kid just gives off the greatest like wholesome vibes we'll just fix it 
He'll just watch and be like, hey, guys, let's not fight. You guys know ball. And we'll be like, yep, you're right. All of our problems will be solved. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, in all seriousness, Curry is that fucking dude. That's my main takeaway from the finals so far. And here's another thing. People keep calling the series boring, and I don't get it. This has been fun basketball. I've enjoyed every second of it. It's just fun watching Curry. Watching Steph Curry is like basketball porn, basically. It's super enjoyable. Yeah, I was shocked by that, but I agree. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess. Listen, listen, I'm crass, but I'm accurate. I'd say Clay is more like that, though, because, like... Yeah, but, like, we're that's, like, prime Clay, though. Clay isn't really there right now. Well, he, he did go off in that one game in the series. I'm yeah, talking. one game. He's had one game, but that's yeah, not enough he, for Clay. He, but it's okay. We're about to get game six, Clay. So. Yeah, I'm scared. But um, <laughs> I feel like an underrated impact throughout the entire finals, and he might be finals MVP, is Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. He said like what? Seth's not gonna, like, Seth's going to get finals MVP. Fingers like crossed. Fingers crossed. Well, not fingers crossed. Uh, why, why am I crossing my fingers? <laughs> you but. just you just jinxed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, but Andrew Wiggins has been like he scores like 22 to 27 points in every game. He gets like 10 plus boards and plays like amazing defense. Yeah. Yeah, Wiggins. I say he's he's definitely, he's definitely been definitely overlooked. Underrated. He's taken on Draymond's role almost because Draymond hasn't done jack shit. Yeah, and that's – oh, my God. I'm realizing throughout these playoffs that I left a lot of people off of my most hated list. and <laughs> Draymond, I guess, is getting he, added. He's number one. He is number one. You've said this four different times about five different players that they're number one. I know. <laughs> it, was like, it was like Kyle Lowry yeah. and Grayson Allen. Yeah. Draymond, no. Draymond. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, I like. I'm gonna say this right now. My take for this whole finals is this is probably the worst officiated finals of all time. In both directions. Okay. Both directions. Yeah. Because there's there's always like the one thing for each team that is like the main problem that the officials are missing. Mm-hmm. For the Celtics, it's like they've been fouling Steph a lot on three point shots, and they haven't done anything. Right. But for the Warriors, if Draymond Green is any other person, the fouls and the stuff that he does is enough for a technical or being fouled out. Yeah. He just stays in the game. Yeah. It's not like it matters, though, because Draymond, like I said, hasn't done jack shit. He doesn't do anything. Like, he's not... just annoying, you know? Yeah. Like, he's not even doing that that thing that Draymond likes to do where he's not filling up the stat sheet, but he's still firing everybody up by just being a fucking asshole on the court. He's not even doing that. He's just kind of standing out there. Which yeah. is insane and, you know, amplifies Wiggins even more because Draymond's played so bad. He's kind of stepped up into that role. But I, I'm i very much rooting for the Warriors to win the finals. I'm sorry. I just love Steph. It is nothing personal. I get it, man. <laughs> but mainly because I want Steph to win a finals MVP. He needs to fucking get one. It is He is overdue. Iggy stole it from him the first year because he played lockdown D on LeBron. And then who else has won it? Durant? Durant both times. Okay. Yeah, Durant both times. Okay, so it's Curry's time. It is his time. It is necessary for his legacy that he wins it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he, he deserves that after the fucking... Well, apart from one game, he has been the Warriors, literally. What do you have, like 150 points through the first couple games or something stupid, or like 130 points? Yeah. And last night was the first playoff game since... Or last night, two nights ago... Right? Or was it last night? I don't know. Time doesn't fucking exist once you hit summer. Two nights ago. Two nights ago. Okay. Do you agree with me on that? Time is relative once once summer starts. It doesn't exist. The only, the only reason I've been keeping track is because rehearsal schedules and Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. You have play rehearsals. That's right. Yeah. Okay. When's that again? Like mid-July. Okay. Mid-July. Okay. I was going to say, because I'm busy early July. I got fucking... I don't know. Is it legal to? T- I think it's legal to talk about getting summoned for jury duty, right? Might want to look that up. Might want to look that. I up. I think you can mention that. I I just don't think you're allowed to disclose what the case is. I think you can tell someone like, because like I, my mom knows about it, and like my grandparents know about it. So I think 
Unless they're all going to jail yeah. with me, and now you're my co-conspirator. Hold on. Oh, no, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who this guy is. It's not like I'm telling you details of the case. I was just like, by the way. Yeah, okay. So I just can't disclose what's happening in the case. And I don't even know if I'm going to be an actual juror. I just got someone for, like, the selection. Anyways, mm. which which sucks, by the way. I'm fucking 19. Why do they want me on a jury? What am I going to do? No, they trust you. They, they trust, they trust you. me? Can't drink beer, but... Have. You can't decide some of his fate, actually, so... Yeah, that was a joke, by the way. I've never drank alcohol. It is scary. Very much scared of alcohol. Likely what? Likely story, dude. Likely okay, story. Anyway, anyways, anyways. <laughs> as, uh, as we were saying, Curry does very much need this finals MVP for his, uh, for his legacy. And... Honestly, like I said, I think he deserves it so far. And I don't think we're going to see another night. Oh, no. The, what I was actually trying to... Jesus Christ, my brain is everywhere. You can tell we haven't recorded in a week. <laughs> I forgot how these work. Um, Curry, two nights ago, it was the first time since 2018 he hadn't made a three in a playoff game. So he's going to come out next or next game and have like 80 points, you know? Yeah. Like it's gonna, I'm going to... What? That's my worst fear. Yeah, it's your worst fear, but it's highly probable, unfortunately. Curry on or revenge mode curry and game six clay are gonna combine forces for like two thousand points. <laughs> Yet somehow the Celtics will bring it within five because that's how this series has worked. Yeah, <laughs> they'll bring it within five at some point and then they'll just like Marcus Smart will turn the ball over seven times in a row. And then the game will be lost by like 10 to 35 points. Yeah, most likely. Um, I don't know. Talk, 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 about the, talk about the Celtics. Talk about the Celtics. How, how do you feel I, about their performance right now? I, I hate the Celtics, <laughs> personally. Because we will have like amazing stretches of like five to ten minutes where we're playing amazing defense. And then, like, we're hitting transition points and we're making threes. But then, we'll, the, like, a quarter will end or a timeout will be called. And then all of the momentum that we've been building up gets lost. And, like, anything that we've been building, like a comeback, like in the last game, is lost. It's so annoying. Because, yeah. like, you give me the hope because, like, we're down by 16. And then... We come back to within the uh, we actually get the lead and then they call a timeout and we're immediately we don't score another point for seven minutes. Didn't you guys have like four points in the fourth quarter or something the last game? Yeah. Something, something ridiculous, terrible. yeah. Which is that game had sixteen points in the first quarter as well. So yeah. It, yeah. It, it wasn't four points, it was finals. four made shots. I think because four points would be fucking astronomical. Like they should just yeah. give the Warriors the trophy at that point. If you're scoring four yeah. points in a quarter in a finals game, dear God, that last game though, really stood out to me. It was very impressive because the way everyone stepped up, I mean, everyone, but Curry, well, no Curry still had like 14, Yeah, but everyone on their fucking team, it felt like had 14, 15 points. Gary Payton was scoring. Um, Wiggins yeah. stepped up big time. Clay had points. It was Draymond a had points yeah, for the first time. yeah. It was a big team effort, and I feel like, unfortunately for you, that game was the Warriors finally clicking in their head, like "fuck, we're in the finals right now, and we're playing like dog shit." Steph needs our help, and it just happened to come at the best possible time. Like yeah. the Celtics needed that game, a game where Steph is shooting zero threes, can't make a single three. You gotta win that. That's a must win. Exactly. And Boston can't walk away with that. That's rough and now the series what three two golden state can close it out tomorrow yeah. night yeah in boston yeah that plays in your favor obviously because boston fans like to say no no words and make clay thompson sad that is hilarious by the way because like every every single stadium says curse words every single night but it's yeah the one time. but boston you gotta admit boston fans are worse at least in boston that's why I, I like it's the type of thing where I'm like I hate being a Boston Celtics fan because, because of the stigma of the association yeah. with the Boston fans because they are just wild. Dude, they're racist. 
they are yeah. openly racist. Openly racist. It is the most like, racist town in like all of American sports or racist yeah. city. And the, like, and the people that say stuff on Twitter that are like, "You like a racist team?" I'm like, "No, I'm the team isn't fire. racist." You like you are one of the racist people that likes the team, right? And I'm like, look I'm at that not, face. But like, I won't even lie to you. We definitely got a lot of them. Yeah, listen, it's not racism, thankfully, but I, you know, I talk all the time. Bears fans fucking suck too. They're just fucking yeah. idiots, and they get over dramatic over everything and things like that, and they overreact, and they're unrealistic and all that kind of shit, and it's. Obviously, again, not on the same level as racism, but it still sucks, and I feel you with that. But, like, a criticism I saw a lot was back in, I think it was the 2016 finals. Remember that video where LeBron got called a punk-ass bitch? You don't remember that? No. LeBron was walking back to the locker room after a loss, and this lady goes, Hey, LeBron, you're a punk-ass bitch! And this security guard steps up and he goes, Hey, woman, watch your mouth! You don't remember that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't remember that. And someone asked Clay Thompson about it after that game. Bleacher Report or somebody posted this on TikTok. Somebody asked Clay about it and he was like, you know, it's just words. You just got to deal with it, man. And then Clay is crying over a couple curse words. But like, <laughs> in Clay's defense, LeBron's getting called a bitch. Clay's probably getting called slurs. So yeah. <laughs> there's a little bit of a difference there. Like, I get it. You can't. And also, this is like, what, a six year difference now? Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Ew. I feel ancient. How do you I think feel I feel? Ancient. I'm 17 and I feel like I'm 48. I'm right going to be now. 20 in a couple months. How do you think I feel? Yeah, one foot in the grave. Man. Yeah. One foot in the grave. Yeah, literally. I do. <laughs> um, But yeah, I mean, this... Oh, okay, okay. One more thing. One more thing about the fucking cursing tangent and then we can get back to the actual game. My favorite thing to come out of that whole thing was Draymond with his son next to him at a, you know at the post game presser he was talking and he was like you know i don't like I, I don't appreciate all these fans you know cursing in front of my kid all that not even 5 minutes later somebody asked him and he basically said oh we played like shit like yeah your kids right fucking there you don't want fans cursing yet you can do it yeah you're, you're the fucking bad. yeah He's more likely to get upset if you're saying it or pick it up if you're saying it than fucking random white man number 43 out in the crowd. Random racist white man number 97,000. Yeah. There's that many in that. Yeah, pretty much. But the scary thing for the War or the Celtics, even though they are the home team, I feel like the Warriors role players have finally gotten in their head. They finally kicked into gear. You're going to have Steph on a revenge game knowing he needs to win finals MVP for his legacy and game six clay all going yeah. against you. Like the odds are stacked against Boston right now. And yeah. I don't know. Jalen Brown hasn't really had that great of a series. He was rough, especially the other night and Jason Tatum. I'm very much questioning his consistency. I know that's been an issue, but like it's become very yeah. apparent in the finals but Robert Williams is out there. Robert Williams is just being Robert Williams. He's got that he'll dog in him. Like he'll get you four blocks, ten boards, and ten points every game. He's got that dog in him. Straight up. It, it really sucks because I feel like the Celtics have done the opposite of what the Warriors have done. Because you had like Grant Williams and Al Horford and like even Derek White scoring Derek like 20 plus yeah. points. And hitting like a bunch of threes. Especially in the first game of the series, mm -hmm. and like even in the bef in series past in the playoffs, but now they're gone. Grant Williams is not doing anything. Al yeah. Horford, like, is one of the people that missed like twelve threes in a row in the beginning of last game, and they're just not doing anything. And honestly, the defense, which should be one of the best parts of our team, is getting torched, torched. Yeah. It's because the Warriors offense is so, and I'm not just talking about like the skill of the players. Steve Kerr is probably the most underrated coach in basketball. He does not get near enough credit for what he's done for that team because everyone looks at it and says, oh, I could win that many championships with that roster. If you really, like I was talking to my dad the other day and he knows a lot more about basketball than I do. I'll tell you that straight up. He knows way more than I do. He was raving about Steve Kerr and the fluidity of his offense 
and how everyone knows exact like you know how everyone has it down to a perfect science namely steph clay and draymond because they've been in it so long and the way they're just yeah. always moving is fucking insane and you know steph curry is a fast little fucker so yeah boston's defense is good but when he's running circles around you and needs an inch of daylight to hit a three you can only do so much and when he's going off like he has been like other than one night he's been on fire and it's, yeah. it's just hard to deal with and i think i think i said if not on here i said it to you that one of my worries with boston was their ability to switch against golden state because of that and so far they've struggled with it that has been it's, a big it's struggle one of for the them. worst parts of our defense we just don't communicate on screens half the time yeah and it's so annoying yeah and like the, I hate what Ime was doing with his game plan for Steph because he said that he didn't even want to deal with him. Like, he wanted to leave Steph open but guard <laughs> everybody else. And that worked Yeah. better in winning games. But now that we're guarding Steph, Andrew Wiggins is going off and Clay's going off. Mm -hmm. Draymond's getting more than two points, which is bad. <laughs> any night where Draymond gets more than two points is a catastrophic L. Did you know that he, any time that he makes a three, it's like the Warriors in the playoffs are like 21 and 0 or something. That's insane. Makes a three. Draymond's going to come yeah. out first possession next game and just hit a three. If he does, I'm turning the game off. <laughs> he's, he's, oh, he's like 0 for 11 so far in the playoffs, which is like hilarious. To yeah. Me. Like I could make a three out of 11 shots. If I was in the play, that's definitely cap. But yeah, like, that's definitely cap. No offense, but that is certainly cap. <laughs> I had my grandpa talking that kind of shit the other night when, um, God, I don't think it was the finals. I think it was during game seven where a couple of your starters had like two points. Yeah. Or not game seven during the conference finals, right? There was yeah. a game where like three starters had two points for Boston. Yeah, it was Al, Marcus, and yeah, not like Derek White, maybe, I think. Yeah, my grandfather, who is currently, was born in 49, so he'd be 73 years old. Me, he loves basketball, too. I talk basketball with him all the time. I think I've mentioned that on here before. And he said, he said word for word, God damn it, I could go out there and score points. I could score more than two goddamn points a night. And I, don't, I think I've told you this before, but my grandfather is handicapped. He, he, <laughs> he, I shouldn't laugh. But I just think it's funny that, that that was his go to with that was a fucking seventy three year old man was that confident. I just my point with that is fans are overly confident with that kind of shit because you hear it all the time. I could do this, I could do that. If I had that offensive line, I could run behind it. If I had that much space, I could hit a three. No, you couldn't. I like to say no, you fucking when I'm watching the games, if somebody misses like a layup or something, I always say like that would be my first two points in the NBA. If I was in that situation, I just think that's so funny because it's definitely not true. I, I can pee. I would pee my pants if I was. It's your first two points that. until Jimmy Butler starts barking at you mid layup. Oh my god! I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, sir. I'm sorry, I'm sorry sir. Here you go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just grab the layup out of midair and hand it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Butler would probably be the scariest motherfucker to go against too. Like, if you were in that situation... His wild eyes, bro. His wild eyes are scary. Yeah. Like, if... Okay. Hypothetically speaking, you had to walk on for the Boston Celtics, right? Yeah. Jimmy Butler would... Or, like, if you had to be guarded by any player, Jimmy Butler would have to be the fucking scariest individual. Because yeah. you already know that motherfucker would be pulling out all the stops because you're not used to it. You know, if you're a walk-on, you're not used to that shit. So he's going to be barking at you. He's going to be hissing at you. He's going to be talking shit. He's going to do everything in his power. I don't know. I just wanted to praise Jimmy Butler randomly. <laughs> I, I had to fit Jimmy in here somewhere since somebody's favorite team robbed him of his finals. I mean, it's very obvious at this point. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying Steph wouldn't be putting up 43 a night if Jimmy Butler was on the court. Yeah, I don't it, know how that would have matched up, though. It would have been terrible. Who would they have guarding fucking Kyle Lowry? Steph would torch Kyle Lowry. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, we know how bad Kyle Lowry is. Come on. <laughs> well, Wiggins wouldn't be scoring 20 a night. That's for damn sure. Wiggins would be a non-factor. Yeah. 
what Steph and Clay would be yeah. going off because you have like Tyler Harrow. And yeah. Max, also, Max Drews on them. Should we issue our apology to Wiggins now or after they win and or lose the finals? I will. I will not. I actually will. Right. Right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I already. I already, I basically already did. This <laughs> is almost finals MVP. You still have to apologize. Like, I'm, I'm saying sorry. you as if I never said anything. We're sorry, sorry, Andrew Wiggins. I liked you when I played 2K17 and I was on the Timberwolves. You were worthy of being an All Star starter. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. I guess so. I guess, even though like better players didn't make it, but it's okay because you're having a good finals run. Uh, you're doing real good, man. This episode is a fucking mess. You can tell we have not recorded in a week. Although, when are they not a mess? Never. This one's just a less organized mess, somehow. Somehow. We managed. Alright, so what do we think is going to happen tomorrow night? I've pretty much said what I think is going to happen. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's over. I'd so like I wouldn't say that, but like I'm just so mad. Jason yeah. Tatum's terrible. Like Celtics fans would never say that. How dare like, you like, say that about back. future Chicago Bull Jason Tatum? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's okay. Zach Levine's supposed to resound the Chicago. I don't need Jason Tatum. Yeah, but like, <laughs> like he's good, but he just does the dumbest things so many times in a game. He always drives to the basket looking for a foul. He'll throw the ball up in the air for no reason. He did that like four to five times last game. And speaking of four to five times, he airballed four to five times. I counted because I was furious. He keeps doing these stupid fadeaway shots where I'm like, oh, no, that's in. And the air balls. And he's getting guarded by Andrew Wiggins, who's longer than him, and knows that he's going to do that every time. I'm sorry. He's what? Longer than him. Okay. Pause. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to break the tension. We can't have all that tension here on the podcast. Towards our own players. Towards a guy that's on our goddamn logo. Show some respect. He's there because of you. You want to change? I know, I know. Do you want to change? Do you want to be Peyton Pritchard? Player. Do you want to change to Peyton Andrew. Pritchard, Andrew? I'll do it. No, don't. don't fucking no, test don't. me. I'll do it. Justin Fields and Peyton Pritchard. I didn't even put my favorite player. I put Fields. I should have put Komet, but it's fine. Justin's the future. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> the only time that Tatum <laughs> scored that I can remember on one of those post fades was against Gary Payton because Gary Payton's like seven inches shorter than him. Yeah. But he's doing it up against like Kevon Looney, who is maybe four inches taller than him. And it's such a dumb shot. We miss layups. Marcus Smart's an idiot. Half the time, because he defensive to player of the year, Marcus Smart. Yeah, I yeah. On defense, he's good. On yeah. offense, half the time he drives. To the, it's the same thing with Derek White too. They drive to the basket. Your audio just completely cut out. I don't. Care. Okay, I'll go back. <laughs> the, same, the same thing with Derek White as well. They will drive to the basket on like. Kavon Looney, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond, and they'll be like, no, I'm open, and they'll do a normal layup and get their face smashed by a block. And it's very annoying. And then Marcus Smart will do this thing where he just drives to the baseline and then hooks a pass out to nobody half the time because they don't bite on it. It's just, there's so many little things. Yeah. And I'm sure that it's very clear. There's so many little things that make me mad about how the Celtics are playing. We'll and it that. all it's like it's crazy because when we're playing good, we're playing so good. Jason Tatum's making like threes that are like heavily contested. Jalen Brown's making mid range shots and like jamming on people. But then when we play bad, we don't just play like bad. We play awful. We play like so bad that we scored two points to like 20 points from the Warriors and that is 
so annoying to watch. Yeah. I think, okay, back to what you were saying about Tatum. I think the NBA has bred this brand of superstar where they think they're going to get every possible foul that could be called on them, you know, the superstar treatment. And I think Tatum thinks he gets the superstar treatment and he just doesn't. So instead he looks like a fucking asshole. Like if that's LeBron, yeah. You know, if he's, like you said, driving to the paint, taking weird layups, throwing the ball up. If that's LeBron, two points. It's Jason Tatum, though. They're not giving him that, which is kind of goofy because, like, Jason Tatum's a superstar. But I guess he's just not that guy yet, you know? Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I, I don't know. Tatum's just so inconsistent. Like, when, like yeah. you said, when he's on, he's on. But there's so many nights where he's not. What needs to happen, and we can probably talk about this more when the offseason hits or, like, after the finals – I feel like you guys need to move on from Jalen Brown and get like another guy that can pick up Tatum slack. Cause like Jay- Jalen Brown's a good second option. If you have a guy that's consistent, yeah. like if you're going to send Jalen Brown as the second option to like, I don't know, Luca. Sure. That's a great second option. And he's going to be a good defender for the Mavs. But with Tatum where he's this inconsistent, you need a guy that's going to be able to pick up his slack. You need a guy, you need like a clay Thompson for Tatum. You're never going to find a Clay Thompson, but you know that type of player that can pick up his slack, or else you're never going to go anywhere. And it's kind of sucks because I figured Boston would be able to overcome Tatum's inconsistencies with their, with how well coached they are, and how. Because my big my prediction for this, and I didn't really say it, but like my in my head, so to speak, was I thought Golden State starting five would outplay you guys, but when it came down to the bench depth. And just needing guys to step up, you would be able to pull that off, and it just hasn't happened. Like, yeah, yeah you've had a couple guys that have had big games. Like you said, Derek White had a game. Um, Al Horford's had a couple games where he's had, like, 20. But it's just not enough. And it's, again, it all falls back on Tatum. Because if you're going to win the finals, you need a superstar. Golden State, they yeah. have Curry. Curry can make that game when he shot. Curry can take over if he needs to. Tatum can take over, but he's not going to do it consistently. Whereas, I don't yeah. know, say the Miami Heat were in the finals, Jimmy Butler can take over quite consistently, but no, somebody had to knock him out of the playoffs. But, <laughs> yeah. I think that's going to be a big thing that Boston really needs to consider going forward. And then, is Horford a free agent this year or next year? This year, I think. This year. Or... Yes, this year. Low-key, Jay... Jalen Brown sign and trade for Aiton. I mean, I think. Uh, Call me crazy. I like Jalen Brown. I like Jalen Brown. <clears throat> I, I I would love to keep him, but if that's a trade that we can make, I would love to make that. Trade. Yeah, like I'm not saying Jalen Brown's a bad basketball player by any means. He's not. He's a fucking defensive stud. But he, I just don't think he's good enough to pick up the slack for Tatum. I just don't. Whereas Aiton, I think he can if he wants to get his head out of his ass, which uh, I'm sure Udoka could pull that off. Yeah. Yeah. But Boston, I mean, they, they got there. But, oh, no, maybe I'm wrong. May, maybe Tatum will pull something out of his ass and show that he can be that guy. And I, I'll look like a dumbass here in three days. But... <laughs> We'll see, I suppose. Yeah. But I do think Golden State's going to win tomorrow, unfortunately. I, I am rooting for Golden State, but like it's a win-win for me. Because either you get you get your finals or it's Curry gets his MVP. Trophy. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I just... Curry's just so fun to watch. I just love Steph Curry. Like, pe- <clears throat> good Lord, I'm losing my voice completely. Look at me being healthy, drinking water and shit. This is only because we're out of Coke. This is not a new thing. This is not going to be normal. <clears throat> Anyways, um, people talk all the time about how we need to appreciate greatness, and it's usually with LeBron and LeBron and LeBron. And, like, I'm going to be fucking celebrating parading the streets when that man retires. Praise Jesus, hallelujah, ding dong, the witch is dead type shit. But Steph Curry, I might shed a tear when he retires. Because Steph's that dude. Steph's fucking fun to watch. And the way he 
change the game of basketball for worse or for better. Take your pick. He, yeah. He's just that dude. And the way he's able to create, the way he's able to set his own shots up, we're never going to see that again. No one's ever going to be on that level ever again. Like Trey Young was the next Steph Curry. No, he's not. He's a hell of a ball player. He's not Steph Curry. And that's a whole other thing. I, I was talking about that on TikTok the other day when players are the next and then insert superstar of your choice. Hate that. Hate that. I was using it for the NFL because Trevor Lawrence is the next Peyton Manning, the next Tom Brady. No, he's not. No one's the next one of those guys. And there will never be another Steph Curry. You're going to have more little point guards that can shoot, but they're not Steph Curry. You're going to have more big forwards that can drive to the paint, but they're not LeBron. Well, I guess LeBron could do more than drive to the paint. I got to give him credit. But you know what I mean. You get what I'm getting at. No, LeBron's a fucking one-trick pony. You heard it here first. All he can do is he's a he's a driving to the lane merchant. All he's good at can't do anything else. Sucks unfortunately. Washed garbage. Jesus man, LeBron, LeBron James is like you're my player when you just rim run. That's all he is. <laughs> I will be shot so tomorrow morning. Business. As soon as yeah. I hit publish on this episode, my head will be in the streets. <clears throat> So do we have anything more we want to cover with that? Anything else you want to point out? Anything you want to mention? I've gotten my emotions out, I think. I'm just sad. You don't want to give Celtics so- fans hope? No. I think that will just make it harder for them to let go. Oof. I mean, the hope is that, and this is like the most dumb thing to say, they're, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are only 24 and 25. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> Everything will be okay. Haven't Celtics fans been saying this for like four years now? I was gonna they're say, only, I was yeah, they were only nineteen. It's fine. Yeah, they're only nineteen. That's what it was. I knew there was a fucking meme with Tatum's age. I couldn't remember what the year was though. Yeah. He's only. He's still I mean, only nineteen. It's okay. My my dad keeps <clears> saying that he doesn't want to say that because he said that about Maryland in like nineteen eighty seven or something, and they have not been back to where they were in 20 years so maybe i shouldn't say that yeah but must suck having a poverty basketball team i can't relate college basketball team yeah i was gonna say yeah fucking hubert davis baby the next legend put his name up in the (laughs) rafters now i mean i'm just saying we kind of like have uh, what we have nobody. I oh, you said we. Around. I thought you said you, and I was about to fucking tear into you. Everyone came back except for my boy. Fucking Brady Mannix, the only one that left. Everyone else is coming back. Wasn't he too old? Yeah, he, yeah, he only didn't come back because he was a super senior. But everyone else is coming back. Everyone else is still eligible. And we're going to have Puff Johnson, younger brother of Cam Johnson, as a starting power forward. So suck my cock and nuts. <laughs> UNC are gonna we're gonna win it all next year on the shoulders of Puff Johnson. That's the perfect name for it too. Yeah. Speaking of UNC, I'm sad. Talk for a minute. I gotta get something. Uh yeah. So I mean this if you're a Celtics fan, be hopeful for Thursday night. Um maybe bring a pillow to punch. Just in case, because Steph will do that to you. Go on. I'm trying to offer some words of wisdom to Celtics fans. <laughs> okay, I'll stop you then, because you're just wasting your time. <laughs> this jersey, by the end of the off season, is going to be worthless. He's going to get traded, and it's going to happen. It'll, get, it'll be more valuable. What it, are you talking about? it needs. Listen, it needs to happen. My son needs to get traded, but I will miss Kobe White dearly. I don't know where I'm going with this. No, you don't have enough to get back. Fuck off. We'll give you Marcus Smart and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. All right, guys. Oh, ooh, ooh. Hold on now. Jason Tatum, sixth man of the year. We'll give you Rudy Gobert, too. Oh, you'll give us Rudy Gobert. Sorry. <laughs> trade for Rudy Gobert just to trade him to Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have that starting five of uh, Lonzo, whose knee's actually going to work. And then Zach will start DeMar. And then we'll have Tatum as the as the power forward. Rudy Gobert's center. 
Then you have <laughs> Jalen Brown as your sixth man. Finals, easy. Carl Anthony Towns coming off the of bench Of course, too. of course. And Kobe will still be there because we're not giving you him. We're going to give you Javante Green. <laughs> In like two second round picks. That, that sounds like a fair trade to me, honestly. The crazy thing is, I wouldn't be surprised to see that trade on Bulls Twitter. I know Lakers Twitter is like the clowning for unrealistic trade packages. But I'm in like the official Bulls community on Twitter or whatever the fuck it is. And dear God, some of the trade packages I see are god awful. And half of them are us getting ripped off. It's not even like us getting the better return. We're giving up like Patrick William. I, Literally, I saw one trade and it was like Patrick Williams and Kobe White for Peyton Pritchard and Marcus Smart. And I was like, first of all, where, where the fuck's our wing depth? Yeah. Second of all, why, why would we trade Kobe to get Peyton Pritchard? It's just the same player. <laughs> it's the same it. player, but different skin tones. <laughs> like, like I'm listen, I, I'm a supporter of the fundamental white boy. You know, I, I'm all about it. But that the fuck are you doing there they're the same player in 2k so they must be the same player in real life <laughs> and they're both just low overall shooters yeah um i was gonna say something else about the bulls oh yeah zach levine's probably re-signing so w he's gonna get paid a motherfucking bag though it's like five years 200 million is what he's eligible for something crazy like that jesus I, that's not even really that much though is it is he worth it? The inner opinion? Yes. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, without a doubt. And that's that's that was something too. It was like half of the Bulls front office thinks he is, half isn't. And like which is weird, right? Like a front office being split on the only player yeah. you've had for four years now. Five years. Five? It's been a long time. That's gross. I miss Jimmy. That's disgusting. It's been five years since it's been on the Bulls. Yeah. Dude, I remember watching that draft in my in the fucking guest bedroom in my grandparents' house. And my exact reaction to that sign or that trade was who the fuck is Laurie Mackinakinen? <laughs> those are the words that came out of my mouth and then i was like oh cool we got the dunk contest guy yeah and, and also chris mean. dunn <laughs> chris dunn was the afterthought he was just kind of there ironically i'd take chris dunn back in a heartbeat we need fucking defensive presence off the bench is he still good i haven't paid attention to him in like two years no fuck never mind then you can keep chris dunn whoever has him the celtics yeah the celtics, celtics had him and i think we cut him i knew that you had him at one point see i'm not a complete casual i would i would have gotten a jersey or something I, I like chris dunn yeah but he was gone in like a day i think i would never get a chris dunn jersey he wore goofy numbers we're like 32 yeah, and like if you're not mind. magic johnson never or mind. Shaq, if you're not magic or Shaq, no thank you no thanks. No thanks. I'm good. You can keep it. <laughs> but like zero? Shit's clean. Clean. Eight? Maybe the cleanest. Eleven? The cleanest number on a jersey. Twenty-two. Easily. No 22? bias. No bias. No bias. No. Are we talking basketball jersey solely? Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a fan of seventy-seven. Shit goes hard. It's like 77 zero. I like double zero. Double zero is hard. Does anyone wear double zero right now? Robert Williams? Is that it? Yeah. Does he wear think... double zero? He used to. I don't Russ... think he does anymore. Does Russ still? Russ wears no, zero. Right oh. I said Robert Williams. He switched to 44, didn't he? Oh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Listen, I sometimes suck with numbers. I should. I mean, I've watched fucking every game of the finals. I don't know. How I don't know what number this man's wearing. We're talking double zero, right? Just double zero? I don't Mello wore it the last time he was on a team. Or when he was at the Trailblazers. He's still in the Lakers, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Jordan Clarkson. 
Czech Diallo, um, Brandon Goodwin. Uh huh. Um, the cum bucket. Duh. The cum bucket, of course. Sure. Of um, course. Of course. How could I forget the cum bucket? <laughs> Jeff Teague wore double zero at one point. It's kind of goofy. Yeah. Yo, that's a name I haven't heard in 11 years. Fucking Greg Ostertag. I've never heard that name before in my life. Marcus Howard. Um, I think that's it for current players. Willie Colley Stein. And that's it. Some Willie. You what? Um, Andrew, you were over here talking about men's length and talking about how you love Willie. What? <laughs> what? Respectfully, it is Pride no, Month, it's... so I'm not judging. No, it lagged. I said I love Willie Colley Stein. That's what no, you can't. You can't trick your way out of this one, buddy. I saw them <laughs> lips moving. I did not see Colley Stein come out of them. <laughs> Like I said, it's Pride Month. We're not judgmental here. Plus, we're both choir boys. We can't be judgmental of anyone. Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Unironically, choir is not. the reason I'm not homophobic. Because I probably I... would be if it wasn't for choir. And that's not a good... I'm not saying that in a good way. I'm saying that in a very much in a bad way. Yeah, my mom... My mom whooped me into it, so... Not actually. I mean, even if she be... did, W mom, honestly. W, w mom yeah i mean you couldn't really blame her if i'm like a homophobic like, yeah no nah, if your kid's homophobic yeah. beat them that is the one time it's appropriate to beat your kid if they're homophobic i made a i said hobophobic <laughs> if they're afraid of homeless people don't beat them but if they are homophobic beat them um beat them i got a comment today on tiktok speaking of homophobia i so you know the stereotype that all male at, uh, sport enjoyers can sit for like hours and just name random players. Yeah, like, that's a thing. I made a TikTok where I literally just named random players to see if I could get people to respond with random players. It failed miserably, horrible, horrible failure. Nobody. But it was like one guy, two guys that did it. One guy commented Taylor Gabriel, and another one commented um, the other Lamar Jackson. And at the beginning of it, I made a joke and I was like, I've got a question for the football fans out there and not just the men, but the women and the children too, you know, like Anakin Skywalker and whatnot. Ah, nerd funny. Yeah. And then afterwards, and I was like, and also any non-binary fans, because we got to be inclusive, which is true. You know, football's for everybody. And I had some guy comment on it and he was like, did you just say non-binary fans? I was like, yeah, bro. They're going to do about it. Okay. Yeah. They exist. They're people. Deal with yeah. it. Deal with it. Speaking of which, have you heard the shit about the new Lightyear movie? No. So, two women kiss in it. Which is like, okay. Okay. You know? No! He's joking. Okay. He's joking, by yeah. the way. A Andrew is not actually upset by that. I'm actually excited about that. Yeah, yeah. Good for Disney. Good but it's been finally. banned in, like, six countries because of that. Over Aww. in, like, the Middle East. Which, I mean, it's yeah. the Middle East. They're the fun police. They're the existence police. Yeah. So, it is what it is. But, yeah, they banned it in, like, six countries. And Chris Hemsworth, not Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans, the other Chris from the MCU, and Taika Waititi, I watched interviews with them, and they were like, yeah, it's kind of stupid. And then Taika was like, I don't understand why it's a big deal, bro. They're just kissing. And like, yeah. Like, remember remember when Star Wars had the lesbian kiss? And uh, was it Rise yeah. of Skywalker? Yeah, Rise. And everyone pooped themselves? Yeah. It's like, bro. Okay. Yeah, like, fucking Lando tried to fuck a robot, and y'all were cool with it. But two women... What? Which I'm not judging Lando, you know, it's Star Wars. You could get some stuff going on. Lando's, uh, I, th I think, pansexual. 
like confirmed. I think that's what he's something like that. I yeah. think it's pansexual. And like, cool. Epic. Represent, you know? Yeah. But I just think it's goofy as a society. We we have to make it like we shouldn't even be talking about that right now. We should just be like, okay, it's the same as fucking Ray kissing Ben Solo, even though that actually sucked and I hate it. Uh, yeah, we really don't. It's the same that. as Luke kissing Leia. No, no. It's like Leia kissing Han. Mm. It's like Anakin yeah. kissing Padme. It's like normal. Yeah. It's normal. It happens. It's life. People love each other. Yeah. Fuck you if you don't agree. I've got a video. I, I keep referencing my TikTok because that's all I've been doing is making TikToks. Um, Bears or former Bears player by the name of Desmond Clark. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He was a tight end in the late 2000s and early 2010s. His kid just came out as trans. So he was a girl and now he's a boy. Like he came out as a boy. And I thought like he wrote this big, beautiful speech talking about how um, gender identity doesn't define you. And uh, I think he's Buddhist or he studies Buddhist texts because he referenced them and they're saying identity and things of that nature are extremely fluid. And at the end of the day, he loves his child for their soul and the person they are. And it was just this big, beautiful thing talking, you know, for pride month, it came out on the first day of pride month. So I made a video about it because I saw it on Twitter and it had a couple likes and I wanted to like put it out there. I wanted to help it spread because it was a beautiful story. And I have it pinned and I'm going to keep it pinned for the entirety of June for pride month because I, I have like openly transgender followers on TikTok, and I want them to know, like, you know, you're valid, you're chilling. Yeah. And the amount of surprisingly 90% of the comments on that have been very supportive and being like, like simple stuff like W dad, W family, things like that. Like goofy TikTok support. It's not like big insightful statements about the current state of our society. Yeah. But like, I was shocked. And then the five guys who are like, ew, L dad, bears suck on and off the field. Everyone's like, bro, who hurt you? Like, th- like, that's always the response. Just who hurt you? And I love it. The, the people that say that are always the most insecure about themselves. Exactly. If you hate on somebody else for being themselves, it's because you're not comf- comfortable with yourself. Exactly. And that's the truth. Speaking of not being comfortable, Andrew, let's talk about Morbius. <sighs> that was a terrible segue. We just went from legitimate, wholesome stuff to fucking Morbius. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> So, um, I'm sure you saw they brought it back into theaters a second time. Did yep. you see how much money it made total? Like $85,000 $85, $85, total across, I think it was an entire weekend, so three days. That is hilarious. That is hysterical. I'm, the camper. I'm a happy camper. And Jared Leto, like, hyped it up on social media and, like, all sorts of shit. And there's a petition right now to get it sent in a third time, which I have proudly signed just because I want it to flop again. I just want it to flop again because it's, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. And I really hope my only concern with this is Morbius get a lot of attention. Ironically, I hope the Sony execs see that and don't go, oh, they want Morbius too. It's Morbin time immediately. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. Tomorrow we're gonna wake up, it's gonna be in theaters. Morbius 2, it's Morbin time. And it's just I, like I... it's a one shot, two hour long movie that was filmed in Jared Leto's basement. It's like actually good. It's like <laughs> completely it's, different. Yeah, they just improvise the entire script and it's better. <laughs> and Jared Leto's that, only that, allowed to that say the might work. Yeah, and Jared Leto's only allowed to say the words it's Morbin time. But he uses them like in a normal conversation, so it's just like it's Morbin time. It's Morbin time. It's Morbin time. Like just fucking around. It's Morbin time. It's Morbin time. It's Morbin time. That would be great. That would be beautiful. Oh my god, I I just this popped into my head because I've been watching The Office recently. But mm-hmm. Threat Level Midnight is better than Morbius, <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. I'm Threat Level Midnight kidding. deserves an Oscar. Don't compare yeah. it to Morbius. <laughs> I'm being serious though. That that movie. That was made to be embarrassingly bad is better than Morbius. Yeah, it is. 
I actually don't know. I haven't seen Morbius. But I'm going to watch it tonight. I'm finally going to subject it. After we finish recording this, I'm going to upload this to YouTube, set it to publish tomorrow at like noon, and then I'm going to watch Morbius. I'm going to subject myself to it, to inhumane torture methods of watching Morbius. It's a, it's a tape your eyes open. Yeah. All right. We've got other movies to talk about, thankfully. Did you hear about No Way Home? No. They're releasing an extended cut in theaters in September. I'm watching it. I don't care. I'm pumped. Because one of the confirmed cut scenes is a courtroom scene with Matt Murdock. So I, I have reason to believe that will be in, in, the, in the, the extended cut. Yeah. And I also feel that my only concern is I don't know what else they can add to that movie or what else can be put into that movie to make it better. Exactly. Like... It was just so good, and I'm worried they're going to overdo it. Like, yeah, I I mean, if they just want to add, like, a bunch more Spider-Man interaction, cool. Sick. All for it. But don't overdo it. You know, there's things they have a little, like, yeah, we want to see it, but there's still a little bit of novelty to it. Because, yeah. like, if, if they're just throwing it at you, it's not special anymore. I just smack the fuck out of my hand. If they just start throwing it at you, it's not fun anymore. Like... After that movie came out, they were talking about Amazing Spider-Man 3 being com- er, being talked about. Uh, Spider-Man 4 being talked about. Like, yeah, I'd be okay if they did one more movie of each. Wrap up the trilogy, you know? Yeah. Nothing else. Don't do anything more. Don't try to give Andrew Garfield a new trilogy with Sony, because they're just going to fuck it up. We saw what they did with Morbius and all that. Don't Try to give Toby six more movies because Toby's story is done. He, we already saw him in No Way Home. He was like middle-aged Spider-Man. We don't yeah. need middle-aged Spider-Man running around unless it's animated and it's Jake Johnson. Then yes, please give me all of it. Put it in my mouth directly. <sighs> um, <laughs> listen, I have learned. I'm sweating my fucking balls off here, dude. It is so hot in this goddamn house. And I'm wearing a hoodie because I want to look cool. Um, where was I going? Yeah, just I hope they don't ever do it. I- I'm cool if they give us a couple more Spider-Man scenes. What I would really like to see is just like a quick scene after the other two Peters go back to their dimension or go back to their reality. Like yeah. we see Toby go back to go- to uh, MJ, go home to MJ. And then... Yep. Yep. And then Andrew's Peter yeah. locking eyes with MJ, his MJ, just to make up for it. Cause like his Gwen Stacy's she's dead. So yeah, it's not like we can just, we, it's not like, Oh, guess what? She's fucking alive now. Or what if they send him to a reality where Gwen's alive? I do like the idea. There was a fan theory floating around for the MCU and I really liked it. I would love for Andrew to be Ben Riley. That would be dope as shit. Cause that's what Ben Riley is, right? That's isn't he, isn't he? Yeah. Isn't he like a Peter Parker clone or something yeah. like that? And he just takes up a new identity of Ben Riley yeah, instead of it being a clone, funny. Peter from another universe. Don't pair him up. Excited. Don't get me excited. Pair him up with a Gwen. Go spider. Start a little spider verse for the MCU, but don't overdo it. Like, I yeah. like, I would like to have the, see the MCU do a little bit of like while they're doing the multiverse shit, give me a little bit of Spider Verse, you know? Like we're gonna get we gotta get Miles at some point. Once That's Sony say. once Sony has milked Miles dry, we gotta get Miles. And I would love to see Silk get a little representation in there. She's an Asian Spider Woman. Give me that. We're already getting a Madam Web movie with Sydney Sweeney in it, which fuck yes. Um Speaking of which, I got another rant I can go on after this. Um, yeah, like, give us a little Spider-Verse. And I know for the uh, Into the Spider-Verse sequel, Across the Spider-Verse, there's rumors that Tom is going to be in that, and Andrew's going to be in that, and Toby's going to be in that for, like, a cameo. Like, even, like, a lesser cameo than what Toby and Andrew had in No Way Home. Which yeah. would be cool. Give us, like, a scene with all of them together. It'd be pretty cool with I that. Really, I really don't care. I'm, I'm so excited for spider-verse 2 oh it's gonna be no sick idea. i'm so pumped 
You have no idea, bro. I'm just, I just want more. I just want more of that animation and that universe. Especially after watching Oscar Isaac and Moon Knight. I want him as uh, Spider-Man 2099. I can't remember his name. Miguel. Miguel O'Hara. That's his name. Miguel O'Hara. Yep. I want that. Yes. I'm very excited. And they also just confirmed that one of the villains for the movie is going to be the Spot. Which is yes. pretty sick. That's hilarious. That's fucking That's dope. Hilarious. It's sick. So cool. Yeah, I'm I'm very, very, very excited for that movie. Another movie I'm very excited about. Are you okay if we move on from it? Have we, have we set our peace yeah. with that? Okay, we've yeah. got a lot to jam in because we missed a week. A lot of shit has happened. Another movie I'm very excited for is Joker 2. Have you heard about that yet? No, I didn't even know that. Andrew. Was it's a musical. It's a what? It's a musical. Excuse me? Joker 2 is a musical. I gotta remember the the, the name and it'll give it all right away. Give it all away right away. Cause they have like a working title out. It's called Folle Adieu which is French. I mispronounced that horribly, but it basically, hold on. I, I got to find the, where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Fully. I do. Oh, that's pretty cool. What? Randomly. I just got followed by highlight heaven on Twitter. It's pretty sick. Something slight. Yeah. Okay, so Foley I do is defined as an identical or similar mental disorder affecting two or more individuals. Joker and Harley Quinn. Guess who's in talks to play Harley Quinn currently? Lady Gaga. What? Yeah, I, I would assume it. I mean, this is already a different twist on the Joker, right? This is an our typical Joker. So it would be a little bit different if we get like a different Harley, right? Not instead of the little preppy girl, give us just a fucking grown ass woman. Cause why not? And also Lady Gaga can sing. And I think that's kind of what they're going for, but I'm, exci- is- I'm kind of excited to see Joaquin Phoenix sing. I'm not going to lie. That's so funny. That's so perfect. Mm-hmm. I am extremely excited for this movie. Yeah. Like it is going head, to be that's- insane. That's so sick. Yeah. Like, you went from the first movie being Taxi Driver to the second movie being, like, fucking Les Mis. Instead of yeah. Ray Mis- Les Miserables, they're going to be Les Miserable because they're fucked in the head. That was a terrible joke. Anyways. God. The movie God. is going to be kind of bonkers. I'm kind of excited. Very excited. So down. It's going to be great. Um, two other movies that are coming out that I'm very excited for, just while we're on this little movie tangent. The Barbie movie is going to be weirdly good. I'm excited. The cast is stacked. Have you not heard the cast? No. So it's Margot Robbie playing Barbie. First of okay, all. Okay, perfect. Anything with Margot Robbie. Ryan Gosling's okay, playing right. Ken. Simu. Okay. Simu from um, uh, Shang-Chi. It's playing Asian Ken, or another Ken, but like, you know, Asian Ken. And it's live action, too. It's not animated, so they're going to be dressed up like Barbies. Kate McKinnon's in it. Um, why don't I recognize any of these names? Alexandra Ship. Like, I, I mean, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling's kind of enough with Simo. Yeah, that's all you need. But yeah. like, that's going to be weird. And then we've got a movie that comes out the same day that comes out. Oh, God, I have an alarm going off. Um, there's a movie that comes out that's about J. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb. Oh, it's not Killian Murphy or something? Uh, yeah, 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 it's Killian Murphy that plays him. I'm so excited. That oh, movie's no. Isn't that like a crazy cast, too? RDJ's in it, um, Emily Blunt's in it, Florence Pugh, Rami Malik, Jack Quaid, uh, Matt Damon, Josh Peck, Bill Skarsgård's brother. 
Gary Oldman, Casey Affleck. I'm missing somebody, I think. And it's a Christopher Nolan film. Oh my God. And it's about the motherfucker who built the atomic or created the atomic bomb. Give me that movie. It's going to be insane. That is the craziest cast I've ever heard. That yeah. is crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Absolutely, Killian insane. Murphy. Killian Murphy is one of my favorite actors. Too. I don't. I honestly don't know a whole lot about him. I know the name. He's got to be in something that I'm forgetting about. But he's in Peaky Blinders. I haven't seen Peaky Blinders. You know what show I've been watching, Andrew? I what show? you. You've seen my private story. You know what show it is. I oh, binged man. the entirety of Euphoria over a two-day span. I didn't see that. You didn't? I that didn't. happened a couple weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Well, that yeah. Might be why. Yeah. Is it good? Yes. Unironically, I loved it. What's the deal with the fight scene in that? Because that kind of makes me mad just off of a base level. Dude, it's... It's just girl fight. Like it's it's hyped up because there's a lot of drama in it. You know, it's 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 like um what's it called? Like girl A slept with girl B's ex-boyfriend. Oh my god. And they like get they're like in front of the whole school on a stage making a big fuss out of it. It's a whole thing. It wasn't better than the fucking No Way Home fight scene or the Shang-Chi bus fight scene. I know it beat those out for uh for some award. Yeah, it wasn't better than that. But like the show itself, other th- like if you ignore the fact that 90 percent of the people are just terrible people and step away from it, and look at it as like, God, I'm glad I'm not them. It's enjoyable. Because like literally my entire thought while watching that show is just these poor kids, these poor kids, because <laughs> half of them are drug addicts. Some of them are drug dealers. Others are uh, victims of sexual assault and abusive relationships and the one kid's dad is gay but won't admit that he's gay so he cheats on his wife and then other stuff happens and he ends up do you care if i spoil a scene from it for you no okay so the main so there's this dickhead jock kid right as there is and his dad is gay but he held it in like he was in love with his best friend and then his best friend moved away so he just married a girl and he started a family and he starts to realize that he was, he's gay. You know, he, he should be with a man. So he goes to a gay bar, hallucinates dancing with his friend, gets thrown out of the gay bar, comes home, starts screaming at his family, talking all this shit. And then he rips his dick out and pisses in the foyer, takes his family portrait off the wall and like talks to his one son and was like, you know, I never fucking liked you and you never fucking liked me. So now we don't have to deal with each other anymore. And then he calls his wife a whore or something, some derogatory term. And then said something about his other son and he goes, I left you guys a present and fucking alludes to his puddle of piss and then walks out of the house. And then he comes back in like the next episode and he's in like an old sawmill with a bunch of transgender and gay people. And his son shows up with a gun. And it's, it's like, you think the son's going to kill him. But then it turns out the son actually reports him for having child pornography. Because he was, what he would do is he would meet transgender women on dating sites. And have sex with them in motel rooms. And one of them just happened to be the main, well, Zendaya. It just happened to be her girlfriend who was a minor at the time and lied about her age. And he recorded all of these encounters. So he had a recording of it. It was a whole fucking, it, it, the show is a mess, dude. It is such yeah. a mess. And there's, listen, there is one decent human being in the entire show. And she is my favorite character. Cause the whole time while everything's going to shit, she's just like, okay. Like <laughs> everything's falling apart around her and she like writes a fucking play about it. Like she's just like, fuck it. Like she's like the forgotten sister. Right. So yeah. she writes a play about it and just airs her fucking dirty laundry in front of the whole school. And that's kind of what starts that big fight. Oh my God. And then she falls in love with this drug dealer dude who is fucking cool as shit. His name's Fez. And then Fez gets busted because he killed two people. 
because one of them was like a bad dealer and the other one was a rat that was going to tell the police he killed the bad dealer. It's a whole fucking thing. The show is a train wreck, but I loved it. Because like I said, what the is whole it on? I need to watch it. HBO Max. God. There are two seasons and two bonus episodes. Oh, also, everyone cheats on everyone all the time. That's another yeah, thing you need to know. Sick. Everybody very just be weird. fucking everybody out here. And it's very graphic. And it's kind of weird. That was the reason why it took me so long to watch it. Because in my head, I was like, there's a lot of sex scenes in this, but all these kids are like 16 and 17. So that's weird as fuck. But eventually yeah. I was just like, you know, it's adults. Whatever. It still made me uncomfortable. The sex scenes are still very uncomfortable. This one girl almost... Well, I don't want to go too into graphic detail. We don't need to get into sex details. That's kind of gross. Kind of beyond us. I'm taking this hat off. I'm sweating like a madman. Look at my hair. Oh no. Hatless David time. <laughs> this is a creature seldom known to man. <laughs> Is it 12.51? How long have we been recording? Has it been an hour yet? It's been over an hour for sure. Let me check. When did I text you? I texted you at 11.31. You got on right about, I don't know, 11.35. So it's been over an hour. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess unless you have anything else to say, Andrew, anything at all, anything you want to say, um, doesn't even have to be insightful. Just anything at all. It's, it's, he's going to say it. It's, it's more than time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the ball knower podcast. We've never ended an episode like that. What the fuck am I doing? Um, I got to ask a question. Name a random <laughs> athlete. In the comments, any athlete, football, basketball, baseball, anything, just name it. That's a good way to get engagement. Andrew, name a random athlete. Phil Mickelson. Who? Phil Mickelson. Who? Bryson DeChambeau. Who? Golfers. They're golfers. This is you speaking a fucking foreign language. Um, <laughs> shout out Chaz Surratt. That's who we're going to go with. Former North Carolina Dang linebacker, cool. current Minnesota Viking, Chaz Surratt. That's the homie right there. That is random. That yeah. is random. Um, I guess I should plug real quick. Over the next month or two-ish, you know, it's, it's going to be over the summer. I've been teasing it for a while. We're going to be doing team overviews for all 32 NFL teams. We're going to talk about their draft, their offseason, all that. Now, Andrew's not going to be in every single one because, as I said, he's a very busy, busy boy. And he simply does not have time to spend 32 hours talking sports. But I am currently working on getting a guest for every single episode. And I have booked some guests. And you know what? I'm just going to say them out loud right now. Tell you some of the people we have coming on just so you can get excited. First of all, for the Miami Dolphins, I talked about him earlier, Nico Elite Takes will be on the show. He's going to come on. We're going to spread some narratives. We're going to know some ball and whatnot. It's going to be a great time. Um, I've got this written down somewhere. Let me make sure I got everybody. Um, nope, that's the wrong one. There we go. For the Packers, we've got my buddy Jake Talk Sports. He's going to be coming on as well as a couple guys that follow me on TikTok. I'm trying to set it up where I'm going to be surrounded by like five Packers fans, so it's just a fucking nightmare for me. That'll be funny. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. I haven't. I've got some people I still got to talk to, got to double check with things like that. Daniel's probably going to come back on to talk about the Steelers. The buddy, da the boy Daniel, Andrew, you can definitely come on for that one. You'll yeah. be here for that one. Um, the Giants, obviously, Andrew will be on for that one. Um, the Jets. Yeah. I've got the guys, Zach and Hector from over at Breaking Down the Tape. I was just on their podcast yesterday, two days ago. Wonderful people. They're going to come on and talk about the Jets. And I think that's it for all the big names I have. Oh, and of course, our buddy, the Geek Slays Chandler. He's going to come on and talk about his Vikings. Um, like I said, Andrew's going to try to be on as many of those as he can, but yep. it's not going to be all of them. Uh if you have, if you know anybody that is a fan of any team, send them my way. If you have content creators you like, or if you are a fan of a team, DM me on Twitter. 
I am very much taking guests. I don't, you don't need to be famous. You don't need to be popular. I don't need guys that are on the level of Nico. That's like a, a unicorn, right? I've reached out to some bigger people. I don't think I'll get a response, namely Tom Grossi for the Packers and Brett Coleman for the Texans and or the Bears. I, I told him he could come on and talk about either one. Probably not going to happen, but I, just come on and talk. If not, it's going to be me yeah. talking to myself for an hour, most likely, if Andrew can't make it. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants me to talk to myself for an hour about a football team. That that would <laughs> suck. That would suck. But anyways, I'm going to go edit this and rip off my hoodie because I'm sweating my balls off. And that's how we're going to end this one.